Okay, and on to arrangements. Now imagine this situation. One evening you have three pieces of homework to do. You've got maths, chemistry and French. And you want to work out how many different ways you could order how you do your homework. So you could go maths, chemistry, French, maths, French, chemistry, French, maths, chemistry, and so on. So you, if we listed them like this, you can see that there are six different ways we could order that homework. Now, what if you also had a date lined up and you need to go out? Where could we fit that date in? So ordering the pieces of homework, we could maybe put the date in last. So each of those combinations we had before, or we could put it in third, or we could put it in the second place, or maybe you want to prioritise and do the uh, date first and then your homework. So there are 24 ways that you could do that. Now we could have worked this out without listing them. If we think about our four positions of things that we can do, in the first place we've got a choice of four items, and then in the second place, after we've picked one, we've got three left that we could pick from. And then in the third place there would be two items left. And then once we've picked all three of those, there's only one more left to pick in that last position. So that also gives us 24. Now if you notice from the um, video before, this one we can call 4 factorial. Now to generalise this, n unique items can be arranged in n factorial ways. So we had four things we were looking at there, the three pieces of homework and a date. Four things could be arranged in four factorial ways. So for example, we've got this car number plate that's HFN389 and we want to work out how many different arrangements there could be of all of the letters and the numbers. So there are six unique items, that means that we can do it in six factorial different arrangements. That would give us 720. Now you can start to see why we want to use this factorial notation. We wouldn't want to list all of those possibilities. We'd end up with 720 different things listed. So we can use our six factorial to help us get there faster. Now, just going one step on from that, how many different arrangements start with H8? So we fix in that H8. That means we've got four spaces left to fill with four unique items left. That would be 4 factorial. So there would be 24 different arrangements that start with H8 because we fixed those in place first and then looked at how the rest of the four items could be arranged after that. Now moving on to look at if we don't have unique items in our collection. So this one we've got two blue, one orange and one pink marble and we want to work out how many different ways we could arrange them in a line. So we could do it like this, the first blue one, the second blue one, then orange, then pink. We could swap over the pink and the orange. We could swap over the two blue marbles. But those marbles aren't actually labelled one and two. This is just to demonstrate things. So if we look at taking off the numbers, then that last one that we've put on, the third one down, doesn't count because it's the same as the, the top one. It's got two blues, then orange, then pink. So we have to figure out a way of taking out those duplicates. So if we were doing this as just four items, we would say we'd do four factorial to work out how many arrangements there are, but we need to divide back by how many extras we get from those duplicates, and that we do by doing two factorial, like this. So that four factorial was the total number of arrangements. We have two marbles that are identical, so they will give us twice as many things as we need because as you swap them over it gives you an extra one each time so we need to divide by that two factorial or the number of ways that we could arrange those matching colours and we would finally get 12 as our answer. So let's have a look at a typical sort of question um, involving those things. So how many ways could the letters of these words be arranged? So first of all equations. All the letters are unique, we don't have any repeats, so that's a nice straightforward one. We've got nine letters, nine factorial ways to arrange them, gives us an answer of 362,880. You would just use your calculator there. Now with systems, we have seven factorial for seven letters, but we need to divide by the repeats that we've got there. So those S's, we've got three of them, 
they could be arranged in three factorial ways. So they could be um, swapped around but still give us the same as what we've already seen. So we divide by that three factorial and we get 840. Now with statistics there's a little bit more going on here. We've got 10 letters but we have more than one of them repeating. So we've got the S repeating, we've got three of those, so we divide by three factorial. We've also got the T that repeats, so we need to divide by another three factorial. And we've got the I, that we've got two of them, so we divide by two factorial. And that you can just pop into your calculator. We get 50,400 different ways of arranging the letters in the word statistics. And if you want to think about this in general terms, then we would look at it like this. So n factorial is how many letters we've got, um, so n is how many letters we've got in the word to start with, or how many items we have, and then we divide by the number of any identical sets. So however many you've got, so p could be how many s's you've got, or how many blue marbles or how many of whatever it is that you're looking at that you know is identical and you divide by every set of identical items to get your answer.